First, gently pipette mix your cell or nuclei suspension 10 times with a wide bore P200 pipette tip. The cell or nuclei suspension should be freshly mixed before transferring into the pips to prevent settling from impacting your sample loading. Next, add 20 microliters of your freshly mixed sample directly into the pips and not on the surface of the pips. Plus 160 units of RNase inhibitor. If performing multiple reactions, add cells and RNase inhibitor to all PIP tubes before proceeding to the next step. Mix the cell PIP mixture 10 times using a standard bore, low retention P1000 pipette tip set to 650 microliters. It is important to pipette mix slowly to the first stop only to avoid creating foam or excessive bubbles. Next, add 4,000 microliters of partitioning reagent down the side wall of the PIP tube using a P1000 pipette. Do not use serological pipettes for this step. Tightly cap tubes and place one tube in the rotating vortex adapter in the horizontal configuration. Ensure the tube is fully inserted into the adapter. It is recommended to process one sample at a time through these vortexing steps. The sample will be vortexed for 20 seconds in the horizontal configuration, followed by two minutes in the vertical configuration at 3000 RPM. For an easier transition between vortexing steps, we recommend starting the timer at 2 minutes and stopping the vortexer with 1 minute and 40 seconds remaining, or after 20 seconds of vortexing horizontally. Rotate the vortex head into the vertical configuration and hit the start button to vortex vertically for 2 minutes. At the end of this step, we have generated our emulsion and captured our cells or nuclei. After letting the emulsion stabilize for at least one minute, remove the excess partitioning reagent from the bottom of the tube so there is room to add the chemical lysis emulsion. Slowly pierce through the emulsion to the bottom of the tube. Wait five seconds, then using a three mil syringe with G22 blunt bottom needle, aspirate out the excess partitioning reagent until the bottom of the pips plus cells emulsion is resting at the one mil volume marker of the five mil tube. Aliquot 840 microliters of CLB3 into a 5 ml sterile PCR clean and emulsion safe tube for each sample being processed. For the remaining chemical lysis steps, we recommend processing one sample at a time. Add 2500 microliters of partitioning reagent down the side wall of one 5 mil tube containing CLB3. Next, vortex the tube for 10 seconds at max speed on a standard benchtop vortexer to generate the chemical lysis emulsion. Immediately pour the entire chemical lysis emulsion into the PIP sample tube. 
and mix by inverting at least 10 times. Then proceed with the next sample by adding partitioning reagent and repeating these steps. Verify the PIP-seq dry bath is preheated to the appropriate temperature for your sample type. Ensure the heated lid is off by pressing lid off. Then insert the samples into the dry bath and select skip and yes to begin the lysis incubation. Please refer to the user guide for the cell and nuclei lysis temperature profiles for this step. After incubation is complete, this is the first stopping step of the workflow. Samples are stable at 20 degrees Celsius for up to 96 hours. After preparing all of the mRNA isolation reagents, as detailed in the user guide, place the PIP tubes in a 5 or 15 mL tube rack and use a 3 mL syringe and blunt bottom needle to aspirate out the excess partitioning reagent from the bottom phase until the top meniscus of the emulsion is below the 1.5 mL marker of the 5 mL tube. The PIP emulsion is less than 1 mL in volume so remove as much of the bottom layer of excess partitioning reagent as possible while ensuring to avoid aspirating the PIP's emulsion phase. Label the syringe and save it for the next pink waste removal step. Next, we will add 2500 microliters of breaking buffer down the side wall. followed by an addition of 800 microliters of the pink departitioning reagent, added in the same fashion. We will then invert the sample 10 to 20 times to break our emulsions. After spinning down your samples in a swinging bucket centrifuge for one minute at 750 G, obtain the 3 mL syringe used previously to aspirate all the bottom pink waste phase. Move the syringe tip in a very slow circular motion at the bottom of the tube to ensure complete removal of the pink waste phase and the red droplet. Spin the samples down for another one minute at 750 G in a swinging bucket centrifuge. Then use good lighting to double check for any remaining pink waste at the bottom of the tube. Be sure to carefully aspirate out any remaining pink waste with the saved syringe using small circular motions. It is critical to remove all the pink waste as it can inhibit reverse transcription if not fully removed. Once you've removed all of the pink waste, your samples can be placed on ice and you should move directly to the washing section of the user guide. With a P1000 low retention tip, slowly aspirate the pips from the 5 mL sample tube and transfer that volume into one of the 1x washing buffer aliquots in the 15 mL tubes. Briefly centrifuge the remaining volume in the 5 mL sample tube in a swinging bucket centrifuge to bring the liquid down to the bottom of the tube. Then perform a second transfer of any remaining pips into the same wash buffer aliquot. Be sure that no pips are left behind in the sample tube or the pipette tip. If droplets remain in the pipette tip, 
Flush them out by aspirating up and down in the wash buffer aliquot at least three times. Gently mix each tube by tapping or flicking the bottom to disperse the pellet and invert 10 times. Load the 15 mil tubes into a swinging bucket rotor centrifuge and spin for two minutes at 750 G. Be sure to have braking set for 70 to 80% of maximum to avoid disruption of the pip's pellet. Remove supernatant until approximately two mil of washing buffer remains. Do not disturb the packed pips at the bottom of the tube. For the second wash, add 12 mil more of 1x washing buffer and repeat the vortexing and supernatant removal steps. Repeat these steps two more times before moving on to volume regulation. After the fourth and final wash, transfer and pellet the pips in a 5 mil tube by centrifuging for two minutes at 750 G in a swinging bucket centrifuge. Next, use a P1000 pipette to remove the remaining supernatant to the 1 mil volume marker on the 5 mil tube, being careful not to aspirate or disturb the packed pips pellet. Users can place their samples on ice and proceed to reverse transcription.